Yehuchanan, called Marcos, Mark, Chapter 1. The beginning of the good news of Yehusha Mashiach, the son of Alhin, as it has been written in the prophets, See, I send my messenger before your face, who shall prepare your way before you. A voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Yehua, make his paths straight. Yehuchanan came immersing in the wilderness and proclaiming an immersion of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Yehuda and those of Jerusalem went out to him and were all immersed by him in the Yardan River, confessing their sins. And Yehuchanan was clothed with camel's hair and a leather girdle around his waist and eating locusts and wild honey. And he proclaimed, saying, after me comes one who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loosen. I indeed did immerse you in water, but he shall immerse you in the set-apart spirit. And it came to be in those days that Yehusha came from Nazareth of Galil and was immersed by Yehuchanan in the Yardan. And immediately, coming up from the water, he saw the Shamim being torn open and the spirit coming down on him like a dove. And a voice came out of the heavens, You are my son, the beloved, in whom I did delight. And immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tried by Shatan, and was with the wild beasts. And the messengers attended him. And after Yehuchanan was delivered up, Yehushach came to Galil, proclaiming the good news of the reign of Alhim, and saying, the time has been filled, and the reign of Elohim has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. And walking by the sea of Galil, he saw Shamaun and Andri, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Yehusha said to them, Come, follow me, and I shall make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And having gone on a little from there, he saw Yehakab, the son of Zabdi, and Yehuchanan his brother, and they were in the boat, mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and leaving their father Zabdi in the boat, with the hired servants, they went after him. And they went into Kafar Nachum, and immediately, on the Shabbat, he went into the congregation and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as possessing authority, and not as the scribes. And there was a man in their congregation with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Ha! What have we to do with you, Yahusha of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the set-apart one of Alhim. And Yahusha rebuked him, saying, Be silenced and come out of him. And throwing him into convulsions, the unclean spirit called out with a loud voice and came out of him. And they were all so amazed as to reason among themselves, saying, What is this, a fresh teaching? With authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And news about him immediately spread into all the country around Galil. And coming out of the congregation, they went straight to the house of Shamaun and Andri, with Yaakab and Yehuchanan. And the mother-in-law of Shamaun lay sick with inflammation. And immediately they spoke to him about her. And having come, he took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately the inflammation left her, and she served them. And when evening came, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. And the entire city had gathered at the door, and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and was not allowing the demons to speak, because they knew him. And having risen very early in the morning, while still dark, he went out, and went away to a lonely place, and there he prayed. And Shamaun and those who were with him searched for him, and when they found him, they said to him, All are seeking you. And he said to them, Let us go into the neighboring towns, so that I proclaim there also, because for this I have come forth. And he was proclaiming in their congregations, in all Galil, and casting out demons. And a leper came to him, calling upon him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, If you desire, you are able to make me clean. And Yehusha, moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I desire it, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him, 
and he was cleansed. And having strictly warned him, he immediately sent him away and said to him, See, say none at all to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Masha ordered as a witness to them. But he went out and began to publish it so much and to spread the word that Yahusha was no longer able to openly enter the city, but was outside in lonely places. Yet they came to him from all directions. Marcos, Mark, chapter 2. And some days later, he again entered into Kafarnachum, and it was heard that he was in the house. And so many gathered together, that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he spoke the word to them. And they came to him, bringing a paralytic, carried by four. And not being able to come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. And when Yahusha saw their belief, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Now some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this one talk like this? He is blaspheming. Who is able to forgive sins but Alhim alone? And immediately Yahusha, knowing in his spirit that they were reasoning that way within themselves, said to them, why do you reason about all this in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, take up your bed and walk. But in order for you to know that the son of Adam possesses authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, take up your bed and go to your house. And he rose straight away, and took up the bed and went out before all, so that all were amazed and praised Alhim, saying, We have never seen the like of it. And he went out again by the sea, and all the crowd was coming to him, and he taught them. And passing by, he saw Louis, the son of Arfi, sitting at the tax office, and said to him, Follow me. And having risen, he followed him. And it came to be, as he sat at the table at his house, that many tax collectors and sinners also sat with Yahusha and his taught ones, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eating with the tax collectors and sinners, they said to his taught ones, Why does he eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And hearing this, Yahusha said to them, Those who are strong have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. And the taught ones of Yehuchanan and of the Pharisees were fasting. And they came and said to him, Why do the taught ones of Yehuchanan and of the Pharisees fast, but your taught ones do not fast? And Yehusha said to them, Are the friends of the bridegroom able to fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they are not able to fast. But the day shall come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast in those days. And no one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, otherwise the renewed piece pulls away from the old, and the tear is made worse. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the new wine bursts the wineskins, and the wine runs out, and the wineskins are ruined. But new wine is to be put into fresh wineskins. And it came to be that he went through the grain fields on the Shabbat, and as they went, his taught ones began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why do they do what is not right on the Shabbat? And he said to them, Have you never read what Dew did when he had need and was hungry, he and those with him? How he went into the house of Alhim while Abithar was high priest and ate the showbread, which is not right to eat except for the priests? And he gave it also to those who were with him? And he said to them, The Shabbat was made for man and not man for the Shabbat. So, the son of Adam is also master of the Shabbat. Marcos, Mark, chapter 3. And he went into the congregation again, and a man who had a withered hand was there. And they were watching him, whether he would heal him on the Shabbat, so as to accuse him. 
And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Get up to the middle. And he said to them, Is it right to do good on the Shabbat or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. And having looked around on them with displeasure, being grieved at the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as healthy as the other. And the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. But Yehusha withdrew with his taught ones to the sea, and a great crowd from Galil followed him, and from Yehuda, even from Jerusalem, and from Adum, and beyond the Yardan, and those around Sur and Sidun, a large crowd came to him when they heard how much he was doing. And he spoke to his taught ones, that a small boat should be kept ready for him because of the crowd, lest they should press upon him. For he healed many, so that as many as had afflictions fell upon him to touch him. And the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, fell down before him and cried out, saying, You are the son of Alhim! But he warned them many times that they should not make him known. And he went up on the mountain and called to him whom he wished, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve to be with him, and to be sent out to proclaim, and to possess authority to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. And he appointed the twelve, Shamaun, to whom he added the name Kaf, and Ya'akab, the son of Zabdi, and Yehuchanan, the brother of Ya'akab, to whom he added the name Banim Ragas, that is, sons of thunder and Andri, and Pilib, and Bartalami, and Matatyahu, and Ta'ama, and Ya'akab, son of Alfi, and Tadi, and Shamaun, the Kanaani, and Yehuda from Kariuth, who did also deliver him up. And they went into a house, and again the crowd came together, so that they were unable even to eat bread. And when his relatives heard about this, they went out to seize him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Baal Zabul, and he cast out demons by the ruler of the demons. And calling them near, he said to them in parables, How is Shatan able to cast out Shatan? And if a rain is divided against itself, that rain is unable to stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house is unable to stand. And if Shatan has risen up against himself and is divided, he is unable to stand and has an end. No one is able to enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he shall plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all the sins shall be forgiven the sons of men and whatever blasphemies they speak. But he who blasphemes against the set-apart spirit has no forgiveness forever, but is subject to everlasting judgment, because, they said, he has an unclean spirit. And his brothers and his mother came, and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, See, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brothers? And looking about on those sitting round him, he said, See, my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the desire of Alhim is my brother and my sister and mother. Marcos, Mark, chapter 4. And he began to teach again by the sea, and a large crowd was gathered to him, so that he entered into a boat to sit in the sea. And all the crowd was on the land facing the sea. And he taught them much in parables, and said to them in his teaching, Listen, see, a sower went out to sow, and it came to be as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And the birds of the heaven came and devoured it. And another fell on rocky places, where it had not much soil, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of soil. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And another fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. And another fell on good soil, and did yield a crop that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. 
And when he was alone, those about him, with the twelve, asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the secret of the reign of Elohim, but to those who are outside, all are done in parables, so that, seeing, they see, but do not perceive, and hearing, they hear, but do not understand, lest they should turn, and their sins be forgiven them. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then shall you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These then are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Shatan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And likewise these are the ones sown on rocky places, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy, but they have no root in themselves, and are short-lived. Then when pressure or persecution arises, because of the word, immediately they stumble. And others are those sown among thorns. These are they who hear the word, and the worries of this age, and the deceit of riches, and the desires for other matters, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes fruitless. And those sown on good soil are those who hear the word, and accept it, and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said to them, Would a lamp be brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be put on a lampstand? For whatever is hidden shall be revealed, and whatever has been kept secret shall come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it shall be measured to you, and more shall be added to you who hear. For whoever possesses, to him more shall be given. But whoever does not possess, even what he possesses shall be taken away from him. And he said, The reign of all him is as when a man scatters seed on the ground, then sleeps by night and rises by day. While the seed sprouts and grows, he himself does not know when. For the soil yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the completed grain in the head. And when the crop is ready, Immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, To what shall we compare the reign of Elohim? Or with what parable shall we present it? Like a mustard seed, which, when it is sown on the ground, is smaller than all the seeds on earth. And when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all plants and forms large branches, so that the birds of the heaven are able to nest under its shade. And with many such parables he was speaking to them the word as they were able to hear. And he was not speaking to them without parables. And when they were alone, he explained all to his taught ones. And on the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us pass over to the other side. And having left the crowd, they took him along in the boat, as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And there came a great windstorm, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already being filled. And he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, is it no concern to you that we perish? And having been awakened, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you not yet belief? And they feared exceedingly, and asked each other, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Marcos, Mark, chapter 5 And they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarim. And when he came out of the boat, immediately there met him, out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one was able to bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, and no one was able to tame him. And continually, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. And seeing Yahusha from a distance, he ran and bowed down to him, And having called out with a loud voice, said, What have I to do with you, Yahusha, son of the Most High Al? Swear to Alhim not to torture me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirits. And he was asking him, 
what is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, because we are many. And he begged him very much that he would not send them out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was there, feeding near the mountains. And all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the pigs, so that we enter into them. And he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered into the pigs. They were about two thousand, and the herd rushed down the steep place into the sea, and drowned in the sea. And those who fed the pigs fled, and reported it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what had taken place. So they came to Yehusha, and saw the demon-possessed one, him who had the lesion, sitting and dressed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who saw it related to them what was done to the demon-possessed one and about the pigs, and they began to plead with him to leave their borders. And as he was entering into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. And Yehusha did not allow him, but said to him, Go home to your friends, and report to them what the master has done for you, and how he had compassion on you. And he left, and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Yehusha had done for him, and all marveled. And when Yehusha had passed over again by boat to the other side, a large crowd assembled to him, and he was by the sea. And see, one of the rulers of the congregation came, Yair by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and begged him strongly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come, lay your hands on her to heal her, and she shall live. And he went with him, and a large crowd was following him, and they were thronging him. And a certain woman had a flow of blood for twelve years, and had suffered much from many physicians, and spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather became worse. Having heard about Yehusha, she came behind him in the crowd, and touched his garments. For she said, If I only touch his garments, I shall be made well. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And immediately Yehusha, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his taught one said to him, You see the crowd is thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he was looking around to see her who did this. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done to her, came and fell down before him, and spoke to him all the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your belief has healed you. Go in peace, and be relieved from your affliction. As he was speaking, they came from the ruler of the congregation's house, saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But having heard the word that was spoken, Yehusha said to the ruler of the congregation, Do not be afraid, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Kaf and Yaakov and Yehuchanan, the brother of Yaakov. So they came to the house of the ruler of the congregation and saw a commotion and much weeping and lamenting. And coming in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child has not died, but is sleeping. And they were laughing at him. And when he had put them all out, He took the father and the mother of the child, and those who were with him, and went in where the child was lying. And taking the child by the hand, he said to her, Talita kumi, which is translated, Little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl rose up and was walking, for she was twelve years old, and they were completely astonished. But he ordered them many times that no one should know it, and said that she should be given food to eat. Marcos, Mark, Chapter 6 And he went away from there, and came to his own country, and his taught ones followed him. And Shabbat having come, he began to teach in the congregation, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did he get all this? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such miracles are done through his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Marim, and brother of Yaakov, and Yehusaf, and Yehuda and Shamaun? And are not his sisters here with us? And they stumbled in him. And Yehusha said to them, 
A prophet is not unappreciated except in his own country and among his own relatives and in his own house. And he was unable to do any miracle there except that he laid his hands on a few sick ones and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he was going around among the villages teaching. And he called the twelve near and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. And he instructed them to take none at all for the journey except the staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in their money belts, but to wear sandals and not to wear two undergarments. And he said to them, Wherever you enter into a house, stay there until you leave that place. And any place that does not receive you or listen to you, when you leave there, shake off the dust under your feet as a witness against them. Truly I say to you, it shall be more bearable for Saddam and Namora in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and proclaimed that men should repent. And they were casting out many demons. And they were anointing with oil many who were sick, and they were healing them. And sovereign Herod heard, for his name had become well known. And he said, Yehuchanan the Immerser has been raised from the dead, and because of this these powers are at work in him. Others said, He is al Yahu. And others said, He is a prophet, like one of the prophets. But when Herod heard, he said, This one is Yehuchanan, whom I beheaded. He has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had sent and seized Yehuchanan, and bound him in prison because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For Yehuchanan had said to Herod, It is not right for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias held a grudge against him and wished to kill him, but was unable. For Herod feared Yehuchanan, knowing that he was a righteous and set-apart man, and he protected him. And when he heard him, he was much perplexed, yet heard him gladly. And a suitable day came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a feast for his great men, and the high officers and the chief men of Galil. And when the daughter of Herodias herself came in and danced, and pleased Herod and those who sat with him, the sovereign said to the girl, Ask me whatever you wish, and I shall give it to you. And he swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I shall give you, up to half of my reign. And she went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of Yehuchanan the Immerser. And coming in immediately with haste to the sovereign, she asked, saying, I wish that you give me at once the head of Yehuchanan the Immerser on a dish. And the sovereign, becoming deeply grieved because of the oaths and because of those who sat with him, did not wish to refuse her. And the sovereign straightway sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in prison, and brought his head on a dish, and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother, and when his taught ones heard of it, they came and took away his dead body, and laid it in a tomb. And the emissaries gathered to Yehusha, and reported to him all, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, Come aside by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a little, for there were many coming and going and they did not even have time to eat. And they went away to a lonely place, in the boat, by themselves. But they saw them going, and many recognized him, and ran there on foot from all the cities, and came before them, and came together to him. And having gone out, Yehusha saw a large crowd, and was moved with compassion for them, because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many matters. And as the hour grew late, his taught ones came to him and said, This is a lonely place, and now the hour is late. Send them away, so that they go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread, since they have no food to eat. But he, answering, said to them, You give them to eat. And they said to him, Should we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give them to eat? Then he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, Five, and two fish. And he ordered them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. And they sat down in groups, in hundreds and in fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to the heaven, he blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to his taught ones to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. And all ate and were satisfied. 
and they picked up twelve baskets filled with pieces, also from the fish. Now those who ate the loaves were about five thousand men, and immediately he made his taught ones enter into the boat, and to go before him to the other side, to Bethsida, while he was dismissing the crowd. And having sent them away, he went away to the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. And seeing them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them, at about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea, and he wished to pass them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a phantom and cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he spoke to them and said to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. And he went up to them, into the boat, and the wind ceased, and they were exceedingly amazed in themselves and marveled. For they did not understand about the loaves, because their heart was hardened. And having passed over, they came to the land of Canarath and drew to shore. And when they came out of the boat, he was immediately recognized, and all that neighborhood ran about and began to carry about on beds those who were sick to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or the country, they were laying the sick in the marketplaces and begged him to let them touch if only the sisath of his garments, and as many as touched him were healed. Marcos, Mark, Chapter 7 and the Pharisees and some of the scribes assembled to him, having come from Jerusalem, And seeing some of his taught ones eat bread with defiled, that is, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees, and all the Yahudim, do not eat unless they wash their hands thoroughly, holding fast the tradition of the elders. And coming from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions which they have received and hold fast, the washing of cups and utensils and copper vessels and couches. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your taught ones not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? And he answering said to them, Well, did Yeshayahu prophesy concerning you hypocrites, as it has been written, This people respect me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain do they worship me, teaching as teachings the commands of men. Forsaking the command of Alhim, you hold fast the tradition of men. And he said to them, Well, do you set aside the command of Alhim in order to guard your tradition? For Masha said, Respect your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, If a man says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is karban, that is a gift. You no longer let him do any matter at all for his father or his mother, nullifying the word of Alhim through your tradition, which you have handed down, and many such traditions you do. And calling the crowd to him, he said to them, Hear me, everyone, and understand. There is no matter that enters a man from outside which is able to defile him, but it is what comes out of him that defiles the man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he went from the crowd into a house, his taught ones asked him concerning the parable. And he said to them, Are you also without understanding? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside is unable to defile him? Because it does not enter his heart but his stomach, and is eliminated, thus purging all the foods? And he said, What comes out of a man, that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, Proceed evil reasonings, adulteries, whorings, murders, thefts, greedy desires, wickednesses, deceit, indecency, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these wicked matters come from within and defile a man. And rising up from there, he went to the borders of Sur and Sidun, and entering into a house he wished no one to know it, but it was impossible to be hidden. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him, and she came and fell at his feet. Now the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she kept asking him to cast a demon out of her daughter. And Yehusha said to her, Let the children be satisfied first, 
for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. But she answering said to him, Yes, master, for even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. And he said to her, Because of this word, go, the demon has gone out of your daughter. And having come into her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. And again, going out from the borders of Sur and Sidun, he came to the Sea of Galil, through the midst of the borders of Decapolis. And they brought to him one who was deaf, and spoke with difficulty. And they begged him to lay his hand upon him. And taking him away from the crowd, he put his fingers in his ears, and having spit, he touched his tongue. And looking up to the heaven, he sighed, and said to him, Aftach, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, and the binding of his tongue was loosed, and he was speaking plainly, and he ordered them that they should say it to no one. But the more he ordered them, the more they published it, and they were immeasurably astonished, saying, He has done all well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Marcos, Mark, chapter 8. In those days, the crowd being very great, and not having any to eat, Yehusha called his taught ones near and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, for they have now been with me three days and do not have food to eat. And if I dismiss them unfed to their home, they shall faint on the way, for some of them have come from far. And his taught ones answered him, How shall anyone be able to feed these people with bread here in the desert? And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. And he commanded the crowd to sit down on the ground, and, taking the seven loaves, giving thanks, he broke them and gave them to his taught ones to set before them. And they set them before the crowd, and they had a few small fish. And having blessed, he set them also before them. And they ate and were satisfied, and they picked up seven large baskets of broken pieces. And those eating were about four thousand, and he dismissed them. And immediately entering into the boat with his taught ones, he came to the parts of Dalmanutha. And the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven, trying him. And sighing deeply in his spirit, he said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. And leaving them again, entering into the boat, he went away to the other side. And they had forgotten to take bread, and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. And he was warning them, saying, Mind, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. And they were reasoning with one another, saying, Because we have no bread. Yehusha, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes do you not see, and having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets filled with broken pieces did you pick up? They said to him, Twelve. And when I broke the seven for the four thousand, how many large baskets filled with broken pieces did you pick up? And they said, Seven. And he said to them, How do you not understand? And he came to Bethsida, and they brought a blind man to him, and begged him to touch him. And taking the blind man by the hand, he led him out of the village, and having spit on his eyes, laying hands on him, he asked him, Do you see at all? And he looked up and said, I see men, like trees, walking. Then he placed his hands on his eyes again, and made him look up. And he was restored, and saw all clearly. And he sent him away to his home, saying, Do not go into the village. And Yehusha and his taught ones went out to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his taught ones, saying to them, Who do men say I am? And they said to him, Yehuchanan the Immerser, and others, Aliyahu, but others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, And you, who do you say I am? And Kaf answering said to him, You are the Mashiach. 
and he warned them that they should speak to no one about him. And he began to teach them that the son of Adam has to suffer much and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days to rise again. And he was speaking about this openly. Then Kaf, taking him aside, began to rebuke him. And turning around and seeing his taught ones, he rebuked Kaf, saying, Get behind me, Shatan, for your thoughts are not those of Alhim, but those of men. And calling near the crowd with his taught ones, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his stake and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life shall lose it. But whoever loses his life for the sake of me and the good news, he shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gains all the world and loses his own life? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinning generation, of him the son of Adam also shall be ashamed when he comes in the esteem of his father with the set-apart messengers. Marcos, Mark, chapter 9. And he said to them, Truly I say to you that there are some standing here who shall not taste of death at all until they see the reign of Alhim having come in power. And after six days, Yehusha took Kaf and Yaakov and Yehuchnan and led them up on a high mountain alone by themselves. And he was transformed before them. And his garments became glittering, exceedingly white like snow such as no launderer on earth is able to whiten. And there appeared to them Al-Yahu with Masha, and they were talking with Yehusha. And Kaf responding said to Yehusha, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three booths, one for you, and one for Masha, and one for Al-Yahu. Because he did not know what to say, for they were exceedingly afraid. And there came a cloud overshadowing them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my son, the beloved. Hear him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but only Yahusha. And as they were coming down from the mountain, he ordered them not to relate to anyone what they saw, till the son of Adam had risen from the dead. And they kept this matter to themselves, debating what the rising from the dead meant. And they asked him, saying, why do the scribes say that Al-Yahu has to come first? And he said to them, Al-Yahu indeed, having come first, restores all matters. And how has it been written concerning the son of Adam, that he is to suffer much and be despised? But I say to you that even Al-Yahu has come, and they did to him whatever they wished, as it has been written of him. And coming to the taught ones, he saw a large crowd around them, and scribes disputing with them. And immediately... When all the crowd saw him, they were greatly astonished, and running near, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, What are you disputing with them? And one of the crowd answering said, Teacher, I brought you my son, who has a dumb spirit. And wherever he seizes him, he throws him down, and he foams at the mouth, and gnashes his teeth, and he wastes away. And I spoke to your taught ones, that they should cast him out, but they were not able. And he answered him, and said, O oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. So they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit threw him into convulsions, and falling on the ground, he rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, How long has he been like this? And he said, From childhood, and often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if it is at all possible for you, have compassion on us and help us. And Yahusha said to him, If you are able to believe, all is possible to him who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, I believe, Master, help my unbelief. And when Yahusha saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to him, you deaf and dumb spirits, I order you come out of him and never again enter into him. And crying out and convulsing him much, it came out of him, and he became as one dead, so that many said that he was dead. But Yehusha, taking him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. 
And when he came into a house, his taught ones asked him separately, Why were we unable to cast him out? And he said to them, It is impossible for this kind to come out except through prayer and fasting. And going from there, they passed through Galil. And he did not wish anyone to know, for he was teaching his taught ones and said to them, The son of Adam is being delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And having been killed, he shall rise the third day. But they did not understand the word, and they were afraid to ask him. And they came to Kafarnachum, and being in the house, he asked them, What was it you disputed among yourselves on the way? And they were silent, for on the way they had disputed with one another who was the greatest. And sitting down, he called the twelve and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. And he took a little child and set him in their midst, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one of such little children in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. And Yehuchanan said to him, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he does not follow us. And Yehusha said, Do not forbid him, for no one who works a miracle in my name is able to readily speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is for us. For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you are of Mashiach, truly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. And whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it is better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand makes you stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than having two hands to go into Gehinom, into the unquenchable fire, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your foot makes you stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than having two feet to be thrown into Gehinom, into the unquenchable fire, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye makes you stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter into the reign of Alhim with one eye than having two eyes to be thrown into the fire of Gehinom, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone shall be seasoned with fire, and every offering shall be seasoned with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt becomes tasteless, how shall you season it? Have salt in yourselves, and be at peace among one another. Marcos, Mark, chapter 10. And rising up from there, he came into the borders of Yehuda by the other side of the Yardan. And crowds gathered to him again, and as he usually did, he was teaching them again. And Pharisees came and asked him, Is it right for a man to put away his wife? Trying him. And he answering said to them, What did Masha command you? And they said, Masha allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to put her away. And Yehusha said to them, Because of the hardness of your heart he wrote you this command. However, from the beginning of the creation, Alhim made them male and female. For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so that they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what Alhim has joined together let man not separate. And in the house, his taught ones asked him about this again. And he said to them, Whoever puts away his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if a woman puts away her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing little children for him to touch them. But the taught ones were rebuking those who were bringing them. And when Yehusha saw it, he was much displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the reign of Alhim. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the reign of Alhim as a little child shall certainly not enter into it. And taking them up in his arms, laying his hands on them, he blessed them. And as he was setting out on the way, one came running and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit everlasting life? And Husha said to him, 
Why do you call me good? No one is good except one, Alhim. You know the commands. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not rob. Respect your father and your mother. And he answering said to him, Teacher, all these I have watched over from my youth. And Yehusha, looking at him, loved him, and said to him, One matter you lack. Go, sell all you possess, and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me, taking up the stake. But he, being sad at this word, went away grieved, for he had many possessions. And Yehusha, looking around, said to his taught ones, How hard it is for those who have money to enter into the reign of Alhim. And the taught ones were astonished at his words. And Yehusha responding said to them again, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter into the reign of Alhim. It is easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the reign of Alhim. And they were immeasurably astonished, saying among themselves, Who then is able to be saved? And looking at them, Yehusha said, With men it is impossible, but not with Alhim, for with Alhim all is possible. And Kaf began to say to him, See, we have left all, and we have followed you. Yehusha said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for the sake of me and the good news, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, and brothers, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and in the age to come, everlasting life. But many who are first shall be last, and the last first. And they were on the way, going up to Jerusalem, and Yehusha was going before them. And they were astonished, and those who followed were afraid. And again he took the twelve aside, and began to say to them what was about to befall him. See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the son of Adam shall be delivered to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the nations. And they shall mock him, flog him, and spit on him, and kill him. And the third day he shall rise again. And Ya'akal and Yuchran, the sons of Zabdi, came up to him, saying, Teacher, we wish that you would do for us whatever we ask. And he said to them, What do you wish me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to be seated in your esteem, one on your right hand and the other on your left. But Yehusha said to them, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, and be immersed with the immersion that I am immersed with? And they said to him, We are able. And Yehusha said to them, You shall indeed drink the cup that I drink, and with the immersion I am immersed with, you shall be immersed. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be sorely displeased with Ya'akab and Yehuchanan. And Yehusha, calling them near, said to them, You know that those who think to rule the nations are masters over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you shall be servant of all. For even the son of Adam did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And they came to Yarechu, and as he was leaving Yarechu with his taught ones, and a large crowd, Lain ban Tama, the son of Tama, was sitting by the way begging. And when he heard that it was Yehusha of Nazareth, he began to cry out and to say, Yehusha, son of Dude, have compassion on me. And many were reprimanding him to be silent, but he cried out all the more, Son of dude, have compassion on me. And Yehusha stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, arise, he is calling you. And he, throwing aside his garment, rose and came to Yehusha. And Yehusha responding, said to him, What do you desire I do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, that I receive my sight. And Yehusha said to him, Go, your belief has healed you. And immediately he saw again and followed Yehusha on the way.
Marcos, Mark, chapter 11. And when they came near Jerusalem to beat Pagi and beat Anya at the Mount of Olives, he sent out two of his taught ones and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately entering into it, you shall find a colt tied on which no one has sat. Loosen it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The master needs it and shall send it back straight away. So they went away and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosened it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing, loosening the colt? And they said to them, As Yehusha had said. So they let them go. And they brought the colt to Yehusha and threw their garments on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their garments on the way, and others were cutting down branches from the trees and were spreading them on the way. And those going before and those following cried out, saying, Hushiana! Blessed is he who is coming in the name of Yahuwah! Blessed is the coming reign of our father Dude in the name of Yahuwah! Hushiana in the highest! And Yahusha went into Jerusalem and into the set-apart place, and having looked around on all, he went out to beat Anya with the twelve, as the hour was already late. And on the next day, when they had come out from Bithania, he was hungry. And seeing at a distance a fig tree having leaves, he went to see whether he would find any fruit on it. And when he came to it, he found none but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And Yehusha, responding, said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his taught ones heard it. And they came to Yerushalim. Yehusha, entering into the set-apart place, began to drive out those who bought and sold in the set-apart place, and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those selling doves. And he did not allow anyone to carry a vessel through the set-apart place. And he was teaching, saying to them, Has it not been written, My house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers." And the scribes and the chief priests heard it, and they were seeking how to destroy him, for they feared him, because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. And when evening came, he went out of the city. And in the morning, passing by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Then Kaf, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered. And Yehusha answering said to them, Have belief in Alhim, for truly I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says shall be done, he shall have whatever he says. Because of this I say to you, whatever you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you hold whatever against anyone, forgive, so that your Father in the heavens shall also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither shall your Father in the heavens forgive your trespasses. And they came again to Yerushalim. And as he was walking in the set-apart place, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him. And they said to him, By what authority are you doing these? And who gave you this authority to do these? And Yehusha answering said to them, I shall ask you one question and answer me, and I shall say to you by what authority I do these. The immersion of Yehuchanan, was it from heaven or from men? Answer me. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he shall say, then why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, they feared the people, for all held that Yehuchanan was a prophet indeed. And answering, they said to Yehusha, We do not know. And Yehusha answering said to them, Neither do I say to you by what authority I do these. Marcos, Mark, chapter 12. And he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a hedge around it and dug a vat for the winepress and built a watchtower and let it out to farmers and went away. And at harvest time, he sent a servant to the farmers to receive some of the fruit of the vineyard from the farmers. And they seized him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And again, he sent them another servant And throwing stones at him, they wounded him in the head, and sent him away, having insulted him. 
and again he sent another, and they killed him, and many others, beating some and killing some. He had one more son, his beloved. He sent him last of all, saying, They shall respect my son. But those farmers said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. So they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What then shall the owner of the vineyard do? He shall come and destroy the farmers and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was from Yahuwah, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they were seeking to seize him, but feared the crowd, for they knew he had spoken the parable against them. And leaving him, they went away. And they sent to him some of the Pharisees and the Herodians to catch him in a word. And when they came, they said to him, Teacher, we know you are true, and it does not concern you about anyone, for you are not partial to any, but teach the way of all human truth. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay or should we not pay? And he, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, Why do you try me? Bring me a denarius to look at. And they brought it, and he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. So Yahushua said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to Alhim what is Alhim's. And they marveled at him. And Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him, and they asked him, saying, Teacher, Mashah wrote to us that if a brother of anyone dies, and leaves his wife behind, and leaves no children, his brother should take his wife, and raise up offspring for his brother. There were seven brothers, and the first took a wife, and died, leaving no offspring. And the second took her, and he died, leaving behind no offspring, and the third likewise. And the seven left no offspring. Last of all, the woman died too. In the resurrection then, when they rise, whose wife shall she be? For seven had her as wife. And Yehusha, answering, said to them, Is this not why you go astray, because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of Alhim? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as messengers in the heavens. And concerning the dead that they rise, have you not read in the book of Masha at the bush how Alhim spoke to him, saying, I am the Alhim of Abraham, and the Alhim of Yaskak, and the Alhim of Yaakab? He is not the Alhim of the dead, but Alhim of the living. You then go greatly astray. And one of the scribes coming near, hearing them reasoning together, knowing that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first command of all? And Yahushua answered him, The first of all the commands is, Hear, O Yasharal, Yahuwah our Alhim, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah your Alhim with all your heart and with all your being and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first command. And the second like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. And the scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you have spoken the truth, for there is one Alhim, and there is no other besides him. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the being and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than all the ascending offerings and offerings. And when Yahushua saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the reign of Alhim. And after that, no one was bold enough to question him. And Yahushua responding said, while teaching in the set-apart place, How is it that the scribes say that the Mashiach is the son of Dude? Dude himself said by the set-apart spirit, Yahuwah said to my master, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool of your feet. Dude himself calls him master. In what way then is he his son? And the large crowd heard him gladly. And in his teaching he was saying to them, Beware of the scribes, who like to walk around in long robes, and like greetings in the marketplaces, and the best seats in the congregations, and the best places at feasts, who are devouring widows' houses, and for a show make long prayers. 
these shall receive greater judgment. And sitting opposite the treasury, he saw how the people put copper into the treasury, and many rich ones put in much. And a poor widow came and threw in two small copper coins, which amount to a cent. And calling near his taught ones, he said to them, Truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those putting into the treasury. For they all put in out of their excess, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her entire livelihood. Marcos, Mark, chapter 13. And as he went out of the set-apart place, one of his taught ones said to him, Teacher, see what stones and what buildings. And Yahushua answering said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another at all, which shall not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, opposite the set-apart place, Kaf and Yaakov and Yehuchanan and Andri asked him separately, Say to us, when shall these events be? And what shall be the sign when all this is going to be accomplished? And Yehusha began to say to them, Take heed that no one leads you astray, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am he, and they shall lead many astray. And when you hear of fightings and reports of fightings, do not be troubled. It has to take place, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and reign against reign. And there shall be earthquakes in various places, and there shall be scarcities of food and disturbances. These are the beginnings of birth pains. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils and to congregations. You shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and sovereigns for my sake, for a witness to them. And the good news has to be proclaimed first to all the nations. And when they lead you away and deliver you up, Do not worry beforehand what you are to say, but whatever is given you in that hour, speak that, for it is not you who are speaking, but the set-apart spirit. And brother shall deliver up brother to death, and a father his child, and children shall rise up against parents, and shall put them to death. And you shall be hated by all because of my name, but he who shall have endured to the end, he shall be saved. And when you see the abomination that lays waste, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, set up where it should not be. He who reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Yehuda flee to the mountains. And he who is on the housetop, let him not go down into the house, nor come in to take whatever out of his house. And he who is in the field, let him not go back to get his cloak. And woe to those who are pregnant, and to those nursing children in those days. And pray that your flight does not take place in winter, For in those days there shall be distress, such as has not been from the beginning of creation, which Elohim created until this time, nor ever shall be. And if the Master had not shortened those days, no flesh would have been saved. But because of the chosen ones, whom he chose, he shortened the days. And if anyone then says to you, Look, here is the Mashiach, or look there, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets shall rise and show signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, even the chosen ones. And you take heed. See, I have forewarned you of it all. But in those days, after the distress, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give its light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers in the heavens shall be shaken. And then they shall see the son of Adam coming in the clouds with much power and esteem. And then he shall send his messengers and assemble his chosen ones from the four winds, from the farthest part of earth to the farthest part of heaven. And learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that the summer is near. So you also, when you see these taking place, know that it is near, at the door. Truly I say to you, this generation shall by no means pass away till all this takes place. The heaven and the earth shall pass away, but my words shall by no means pass away. But concerning that day and the hour no one knows, not even the messengers in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch, and pray, for you do not know when the time is. As a man going abroad, having left his house and given authority to his servants, and to each his work, 
and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, or at midnight, or at the crowing of the cock, or in the morning, lest, coming suddenly, he should find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Marcos, Mark, chapter 14. Now the Pesach and the festival of Matsuth was after two days, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to take him through treachery and put him to death. And they said, Not at the festival, lest there be an uproar of the people. And while he was in Bit Anya, in the house of Shamaun the leper, and sitting at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of perfume, genuine nard, very costly and breaking the flask, she poured it on his head. But there were some who were much displeased among themselves and said, Why was this perfume wasted? For it could have been sold for more than three hundred denarii and given to the poor. And they were scolding her. But Yehusha said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, and you are able to do good to them whenever you wish. But you do not always have me. What she had, she used. She took it beforehand to anoint my body for the burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in all the world, what this woman did shall also be spoken of to her remembrance. And Yehuda from Karyuth, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to deliver him up to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him silver. And he was seeking how to deliver him up conveniently. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they were slaughtering the Pesach lamb, his top one said to him, Where do you wish us to go and prepare for you to eat the Pesach? And he sent out two of his top ones and said to them, Go into the city, and there a man bearing a jar of water shall meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is the guest room in which I am to eat the Pesach with my top ones? and he shall show you a large upper room, furnished, ready. Prepare for us there. And his taught ones went out and came into the city, and found it as he said to them, and they prepared the Pesach. And evening having come, he came with the twelve. And as they sat and ate, Yehusha said, Truly I say to you, one of you who is eating with me shall deliver me up. They began to be grieved, and to say to him one by one, Is it I? And another, Is it I? And he answering said to them, It is one of the twelve, he who is dipping with me in the dish. The son of Adam is indeed going, as it has been written of him, but woe to that man by whom the son of Adam is delivered up. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, Yehusha took bread, having blessed, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And taking the cup, giving thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, that of the renewed covenant, which is shed for many. Truly I say to you, I shall certainly no more drink of the fruit of the vine till the day when I drink it anew in the reign of Elohim. And having sung a song, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Yehusha said to them, All of you shall stumble in me this night, for it has been written, I shall strike the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. But after I am raised, I shall go before you to Galil. And Kaf said to him, Even if all shall stumble, yet not I. And Yehusha said to him, Truly I say to you that today, this night, before the cock shall crow twice, you shall deny me three times. But he spoke more strongly, If I have to die with you, I shall not deny you. And they all said the same. And they came to a place called Gethshemani. And he said to his taught ones, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Kaf and Ya'akab and Yehuchanan, and he began to be greatly amazed and to be deeply distressed. And he said to them, My being is exceedingly grieved, even to death. Stay here and watch. And he went on a little and fell on the ground and was praying that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Ab, Father, all is possible for you. Make this cup pass from me. Yet not what I desire, but what you desire. 
and he came and found them sleeping, and said to Kaf, Shamaun, are you sleeping? You were not able to watch one hour. Watch and pray, lest you enter into trial. The spirit indeed is eager, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, and spoke the same words. And having returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. See, the son of Adam is being delivered up into the hands of the sinners. Rise up, let us go. See, he who is delivering me up has drawn near. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Yehuda, one of the twelve, with a large crowd with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And the one who was delivering him up had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, it is he. Seize him and lead him away safely. And coming, going straight up to him, he said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and seized him. And one of those standing by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Yehusha answering said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? Daily I was with you in the set-apart place teaching, and you did not seize me, but let the scriptures be filled. And they all left him and fled. And a certain young man was following him, having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body. And when they seized him, he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. And they led Yehusha away to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together to him. And Kaf followed him at a distance, even into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the officers and warming himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the council were seeking witness against Yehusha to put him to death, and they were finding none. For many bore false witness against him, but their evidences did not agree. And some rose up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him saying, I shall destroy this dwelling place that is made with hands, and within three days I shall build another made without hands. And not even then did their witness agree. Then the high priest stood up in the center and asked Yehusha, saying, Have you no answer to make? What do these witness against you? But he remained silent and gave no answer. Again the high priest asked him, saying to him, Are you the Mashiach, the son of the blessed? And Yehusha said, I am, and you shall see the son of Adam sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of the heaven. And tearing his garments, the high priest said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be liable to death. And some began to spit on him and to blindfold him and to beat him and say to him, Prophesy! And the officers struck him with the palms of their hands. And as Kaf was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Kaf warming himself, she looked at him and said, And you were with Yehusha of Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know nor understand what you are saying. And he went out onto the porch, and a cock crowed. And the servant girl saw him again, and began to say to those who stood by, This is one of them. And again he was denying it. And after a little while, those who stood by again said to Kaf, Truly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean too, and your speech is alike. And he began to curse and swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And a second time the cock crowed. And Kaf remembered the word that Yahusha had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. And thinking on it, he wept. Marcos, Mark, chapter 15. And immediately, in the morning, the chief priests had a council meeting with the elders and scribes and all the council. Having bound Yehusha, they led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the sovereign of the Yahudim? And he answering said to him, You say it. And the chief priests accused him of much, but he made no answer. And Pilate again asked him, saying, have you no answer? See how much they witness against you. But Yehusha still gave no answer, so that Pilate marveled. 
and at a festival he released to them one prisoner, whomever they were asking. There was one called Baraba, chained with his fellow rebels, who had committed murder in the uprising. And the crowd, crying aloud, began to ask, as he had always done for them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Do you wish me to release for you the sovereign of the Yahudim? For he knew that the chief priest had handed him over because of envy. And the chief priest stirred up the crowd, that he should rather release Barabbas to them. And Pilate answered and again said to them, What then do you wish me to do to him whom you call the sovereign of the Yahudim? And again they cried out, Impale him! And Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? And they vehemently cried out, Impale him! And Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and having whipped him, he delivered Yehusha over to be impaled. And the soldiers led him away into the court, which is the palace, and they called together the entire company of soldiers, and decked him with purple. And they plaited a crown of thorns, put it on him, and they began to call out to him, Greetings, sovereign of the Yahudim! And they kept beating him on the head with a reed, and were spitting on him, and bending the knee, they were bowing down to him. And when they had mocked him, they took the purple off him, and put his own garments on him, and led him out to impale him. And they compelled a passerby, Shamaun, a Cyrenian, coming from a field, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his stake. And they brought him to the place, Galgalath, which is translated, place of a skull. And they were giving him wine mixed with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. And when they impaled him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them, what each one should take. And it was the third hour, and they impaled him. And the inscription of his accusation was written above, The Sovereign of the Yahudim. And with him they impaled two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. And the scripture was filled which says, And he was reckoned with the lawless. And those passing by were blaspheming him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah! You who destroy the dwelling place and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the stake. And likewise, the chief priests and the scribes, mocking to one another, said, He saved others. He is unable to save himself. The Mashiach, the sovereign of Yesharal, come down now from the stake, so that we see and believe. And those who were impaled with him were reproaching him. And when the sixth hour came, Darkness came over all the land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Yehusha cried out with a loud voice, saying, Ali, Ali, lama shabachtani, which is translated, My all, my all, why have you forsaken me? And some of those standing by, when they heard it, said, See, he is calling for Aliyahu. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink, saying, Leave him, let us see if Al-Yahu does come to take him down. And Yehusha cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. And the veil of the dwelling place was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the captain, who was standing opposite him, saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the son of al -Him. There were also women watching from a distance, among whom was also Marim from Magdala, and Marim the mother of Yaqab the Las, and Yehusaf and Shalama, who also followed him and attended him when he was in Galil, and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Shabbat, Yehusaf of Ramathim, a prominent council member, who was himself waiting for the reign of Alhim, came boldly went into Pilate and asked for the body of Yehusha. But Pilate wondered whether he was already dead. So summoning the captain, he asked him if he was already dead. And when he learned this from the captain, he gave the body to Yehusaf. And he, having bought fine linen, took him down and wrapped him in the linen. And he laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock and rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. And Marim from Magdala and Marim the mother of Yehusaf saw where he was laid. Marcos, Mark, chapter 16. And when the Shabbat was passed, 
Marim from Magdala, and Marim, the mother of Yaakab, and Shalama, bought spices to go and anoint him. And very early on day one of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb for us? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was extremely large. And having entered into the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right, wearing a white robe, and they were greatly astonished. And he said to them, Do not be much astonished. You seek Yehusha of Nazareth, who was impaled. He was raised. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. And go, say to his top ones, and cough, that he is going before you into Galil. You shall see him there as he said to you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, and were trembling and bewildered. And they spoke to no one, for they were afraid. And having risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Marim from Magdala, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and reported to those who had been with him, mourning and weeping. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. And after this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into a field. And they went and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he reproached their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he was raised. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to every creature. He who has believed and has been immersed shall be saved, but he who has not believed shall be condemned. And these signs shall accompany the ones who believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with renewed tongues. They shall take up snakes. And if they drink any deadly drink, it shall by no means hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall get well. Then indeed, after the master had spoken to them, he was received up into the heaven and sat down at the right hand of Alhim. And they went out and proclaimed it everywhere while the master worked with them and confirmed the word through the accompanying signs. Amen.